oh my god, it took so long to root. In their little smart Hoya brains, they've decided that they want this in order to give you flowers. Just look at this magical being. Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, and today I'm going to be talking about Hoyas also known as wax plants or wax flower, based off the waxy texture of their leaves and like when they bloom, their flowers are quite waxy looking, like they almost look fake, which is pretty cool, but they're really gorgeous. But they have become so popular recently. I've been seeing so many more people on Instagram and Facebook selling them, buying them, collecting them, trying to have loads of Hoya in their lives, which is super fun, so I figured, why not share how I care for mine so you can care for yours too? Hoyas are fairly slow growers and you can either train them to climb up or trail down, kind of however you want them to look. They can handle either way. One thing to note though is that because there's so many different varieties, Hoya care can vary a little bit between different types of plants, which is totally fine. But this video is going to be kind of a general all around care because for the most part it's fairly similar but there are some key differences. I'd say it is pretty important for you to find the care for your specific plant in addition to this just because some of them might be a little bit different than the ones I have. So yeah. There are so many different varieties. I personally, I have four different wax plants, Hoyas. This one is a Hoya Crimson Princess. I have the Hoya Crimson Queen. You can tell the difference because the princess has white in the middle of the leaves and the queen has white around the edges of the leaves, which, fun, they're different, but they're, th they're basically the same care, but they just have different forms of variegation, which is fun. And then I've got a Hoya Compacta, which has these pretty insane, kind of curly-whirly compact leaves they just kind of curl around and trail which is nice well, last but not least i have this hoya carii variegata which is basically known for its like super heart-shaped leaves uh, and this one is the variegated type there are some with just normal hearts that you see they often get sold around valentine's day because they're just little hearts. So yeah, those are my four different varieties of Hoya, but there are so many more, so many, like there's a lot. A lot of Hoyas like to dry out pretty much all the way between waterings. Constantly moist soil is a fast track to root rot and you definitely do not want root rot with them because they're not very forgiving. And it's really important to not let them sit in a bunch of water after you've watered them because again, it leads to root rot and we really don't want that. In order to combat the watering issue, a lot of people suggest that you bottom water Hoyas and let them take the amount of water that they need, let them suck it up and then take them out of the water and let them continue on their merry way. The only problem with this is you do not want to let them sitting in the water too long because like we said, root rot can happen and it's not ideal. So if you do bottom water your Hoyas, do be careful not to let them sit too long. I'd say I watered these probably about every seven to 10 days over the summer and maybe every two to three weeks in the winter. They don't need all that much. And then, like I said, they like to get to fully dry between waterings. So like, it's really not that often. I just check with my moisture meter to see whether or not they're dry all the way down to the bottom. And then I give them some more water. Some signs of overwatering are wrinkled or discolored leaves near the base of the plant. That means that your plant might be doing a little bit of rotten in there. So be careful to look out for that. Some varieties though also wrinkle when they are thirsty, um, but that usually starts near the tips of the vines rather than at the base of the plant. So wrinkled at the base, overwatering, wrinkled at the tips, more often underwatering. Hoyas like lots and lots of bright indirect light. They really need to be in a really bright spot in order to thrive. Though they don't like direct sunlight and dark spots on the leaves can be signs of sunburn. So don't let that happen. I keep the majority of mine about 
one meter away from a southwest window that does get a little bit of morning sun sometimes and I think they're okay with that but at most it's like an hour so it's not that much to burn them and it's not typically very hot because it's morning light but they seem to like that quite a lot I've had quite a lot of growth recently which is fun and you can even see that the new growth on these ones comes out in this gorgeous pink color which is amazing and it's just really fun to watch them be bright pink for a little while. Hoya's ideal temperatures are between 15 and 30 degrees Celsius or 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty much if you're comfortable in your home, they, will, they should be pretty comfortable as well. But of course they do prefer it a little bit warmer. Any temperatures below like 12 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit, the growth will slow down or even stop. Anything below 10 or 50 and you are risking chill damage with these because they really don't like the cold. If you do bring them outside for summer, which they would love if you have hot summers, they would love it outside as long as you keep them in a shaded area because obviously you don't want them to get sunburnt. But if you do bring them outside, you want to make sure you bring them in before the weather turns and it starts to get cold again. When it comes to humidity, Hoyas prefer like a moderately high humidity uh, to be at their very best. I like to keep mine above 50% humidity, but ideally around 60 to 80 if possible. And I do that through the use of humidifiers. And I think generally my home is fairly humid on its own. So they quite like my space for that. It is important to note though that thicker stemmed varieties of Hoya will need less humidity and thinner stems like the Hoya linearis will need more. So depending on your variety of Hoya, the humidity changes just a little bit. Because we don't want to risk root rot, well draining soil is a must for Hoyas. Like it's so important. Even something like cactus or succulent soil could work. They also don't mind being root bound and that paired with their very slow growth means that you probably won't have to repot your Hoyas more than every two or three years, which makes it a fairly easy plant, not too high maintenance. I fertilized my Hoyas probably about one to two times a month in the spring and summer and I think they liked that quite a lot. They did get a good amount of new growth during that season, but since it's now autumn I have stopped giving them fertilizer completely because they really don't need it in autumn and winter. And so I probably won't start again until about March, maybe April, depending on the temperatures. Propagation of Hoyas is fairly easy, but it can take forever, forever, ages. I propagated this one from a few cuttings and oh my God, it took so long to root. So all you would need to do is take some stem cuttings and make sure that you have one to two nodes in some water and eventually that will sprout roots. <sighs> I, uh, I need to look at how long it took me. It took for freaking ever. Thank God I have this like Instagram which has literally my entire history of all of the, my plants. Like I, I know exactly how long it took for me to do all these things. <sighs> but also it takes a long time to get back a year when you're posting every freaking day. <sighs> Sorry, that took a minute. But so I got the cuttings of this Crimson Princess from my cousin in early September, 2019. I think I potted this up in April of 2020. So that's like a good six months there, maybe seven. And I know I was propagating over winter, so probably made it take longer, but it, <laughs> I think even in summer, it was gonna take a really long time. I have also tried with my Hoya Compacta taking cuttings and putting them directly into soil. I didn't have quite as much success with that. Probably about 50% died, which wasn't ideal. So it works, but it wasn't my favorite method. And also 
I struggle when I can't see the roots because you can't tell if they're doing well or not. So I find water propagation quite a lot easier. I have also heard that boosting the humidity of your cuttings would help them root a little bit faster. So you can put them in like a glass cloche, is that what it's called? A, like a bell jar thing? Or like a plastic bag or something, just to give it that little bit of extra humidity in order to force it to get the roots to come out. So one of the cool things about Hoyas is their flowers. They have the craziest like, plastic wax fake looking flowers that bloom in this kind of like burst. If I can find a picture, I'll put one up there. I will have to say mine have never bloomed, but I think that is fairly normal. I've heard that they don't bloom for the first year, maybe even two. The plants really do need to be quite mature in order for them to bloom. So I just have to be patient. Obviously this one was grown from cuttings, so it's definitely not a mature plant yet. It's only been like six months since it's been in soil, maybe longer. April? April now. Seven months? But yeah, so patience is key. I'm hoping that some of my other ones might bloom in the future, probably before this one, because I've gotten them as more mature plants, but We'll see hopefully next spring, maybe I can get some to bloom. So yeah, if you're watching this in spring of 2021, go check out my Instagram to see if it worked. <laughs> if yours hasn't bloomed and it is a mature plant, it could be that it's not getting sufficiently bright light. They do need the really bright indirect light in order to bloom. They also like to be in a quite tight pot. So if you have upped their pot recently, it might mean that they won't bloom that year. Also, it's pretty common for them to need a period of drought in early spring in order to bloom. So I think my plan with these for the spring in a few months is to give them a four to five week dry period where I don't water them at all. And I know that sounds scary, it's definitely scary to me, but when you do that, it gives them like the hint that they need to be putting out flowers. I don't know how. In the little smart Hoya brains, they've decided that they want this in order to give you flowers. So I plan on giving them that little bit of dry period come spring. Also, it is super duper 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 important not to cut off the like bit of the stem that grows the flowers, the pendicule, I think it's called, because that is where your plant is gonna bloom from year after year. So if you cut it off, it has to grow a whole new one and that could take ages because they're such slow growers. So don't cut it off and hopefully you'll get more flowers next year and the year after that and the year after that. So yeah, don't cut it. I have heard that Hoyas can be prone to pests like mealybugs, especially varieties that have this sort of crinkly texture because mealybugs have so many different places to hide in this and they won't be that easy to spot. So do beware if you do get this sort of compacta variety of Hoyas to really get in there to check whether or not you've got pests because we don't want pests. If you do get mealybugs though, a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip, just poke them, they'll immediately die. So it should be fine. So don't worry about it, it'll be good, it'll be fine. So yeah, that's it, that's all you need to know in order to take care of your Hoya plants. I will say though, it is important to have a look at your individual Hoya plant needs because Hoyas like the Linearis, they're gonna need different care than the Carii or the Crimson Princess. So do have a look for your specific Hoya's care needs as well. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplants you'd like me to talk about next or other planty things. And subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.